Hello and welcome along to the Tackling Sport Podcast. It's Daniel Hussey here and kind of continuing and suppose a small bit of our kind of mini size and bite size specials. And before, for those listening to the podcast a while ago, we spoke to um, player stats data about kind of keeping stats in the League of Ireland. So on that kind of theme, delighted to welcome Aidan Savage. Uh, Aidan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dan. Glad to be here. Yeah, and I suppose you're going to give us a little bit of a background, a GA background into to stats. And I know personally, my own club, we're very interested in terms of stats. Or we're getting more interested, the more serious it gets. And I suppose there might be a lot of clubs and players and management in that boat. Do you want to give a bit of background to your own club and how you got involved in keeping stats? Because I think it does interest a lot of people. Yeah, so uh, first of all, thanks for for having me, Dan. It's um, When you approached me about this, it was actually quite uh, interesting because... I suppose this, it just goes to show the, the level of interest that there is in uh, retrospective um, stats and videography during games. <clears throat> so um, I suppose from my own point of view, my own club, Bally McElligot, or Bally Mac as it's otherwise known, just in between Trilly and Castle Island, uh, I suppose has been something to the core of my sporting interests for an awful long time. Um, I think I said to you previously that I would equivocate our uh, previous look to uh, to Mayo <laughs> in a certain way but at the same time we have an immense amount of potential and um, like even the structures that have been put in place in the last 10 to 15 years by our underage are only now beginning to show fruit so um, then I suppose the stats and the videography I suppose is the next side of the development and um, our management our senior management and ourselves sat down over three years ago when I first um, became involved. And one of the key things that we want to put in place is something that, yes, can measure a team's um, performance in certain areas, um, but also not to go over the top, um, as in not to bombard players, especially with too many numbers, because some will consume them better than others um, and some won't. Let's just be straight about it. Um, so for us, we wanted to put in place something that would be uh, relatively easy to consume, but also for the management as well to be able to make, um, you know, certain levels of, um, you know, pinpointing not, but like considering we're a club as well, we can't go down to individual players, but we have to look at it from a collective as opposed to, to say, our corner forward or wing back is say so many turnovers and you know isn't doing what he should be doing and all this kind of stuff we had to look at it from the, the amount of resources that we had in place in order to get the most most out of it so at the start of this particular year with COVID and everything else um, we have two of us on on the sideline basically taking in uh, different lines of data that we've previously agreed with management and also with um, input from the players as to what they would consider to uh, to be useful. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the management's call as to what goes in and what doesn't. So we've made our, our own few innovations um, in, in, in different uh, stats that we, that we derive. Um, I've been asked not to mention those, <laughs> mm -hmm. but just to keep it high level. But yeah. for, I suppose, for the use of, 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 of the viewers, um, it's a lot to really to to show the potential that's there um, and the usefulness um, and like we can even put together now for the, this season we can put together um, graphs as to how well we performed throughout the season in particular areas and that'll form um, a very interesting kind of snapshot going into next year as to what areas that would need to be improved and what areas we're strong in. So on the statistical side of things, um, it's proven to be very, very useful. Um, some are more old school than others. Uh, they might say, well, what, what good is this? All we need to know is what's on the scoreboard. And that's, you know, that's fair enough. But there needs to be a kind of a little bit of a, you know, looking under the bonnet and kind of seeing what's, uh, what's working and what's not. And um, I suppose to have a, a collation of data there to look back on um is is useful mm. so you mentioned like on the over the top side of things in terms of stats i know like i think i might fall into the category of if we if we were doing a lot of stats i'd love as much information as possible where other players 
wouldn't. So I guess it's important. You, you're kind of doing the cold stats, but I suppose management is the filter between you and the players, I guess. And I think that's probably why it ends up, ends up working so well, ultimately, because the players are given only what they really need to know. Absolutely. Yeah, like, to be honest with you, it's, uh, we're, it's still a work in progress, to be honest, in terms of, especially in real-time situations, what will players consume? Yeah. You know, because in the heat of battle, you're basically, you're not really concerned of how many turnovers we've had in a game or <clears throat> some scoring opportunities or conversion rate, whatever, you know, you're not, you're not kind of zoned in on that. It's kind of more the following week when you kind of look back and kind of say, Jesus, you know, this was a noteworthy stat because what we do is between Saturday and Monday, we collate the statistics and then we share them. And it's for everybody to consume in their own way. <clears throat> but again, it's all down to um, the individual and how they consume it. And that goes for not alone management, but it goes for players as well. Um, there is a bit of work to what we do. Um, and we try to innovate as well. We try to, you know, try to uh, bring new methodology, not even in terms of technology, uh, Dan, to be honest, um, because it, again, it's kind of limited in terms of what a, a GAA club can do and especially you're dealing with amateur players you're not dealing with fellas that are you know this is their full-time job so you have to be kind of conscious of that as well but at the same time you want to kind of maximize performance um, and that's what we try to do when we try to find the balance. So then on a typical match day for you so say you mentioned say Saturday is probably the predominant um, time for games or what, whatever the match day is um, how do you go about the day are you keeping are you trying to track most of the stats for during the live game as well and then kind of getting the more detailed stats looking back on the game or how what's a typical kind of match day for you yeah so I suppose a typical match day for us um like we'll get into the videography side yeah after this but um basically the the stats between myself and my colleague is basically to do with we will divide uh uh, kind of a a set of, of, of stats that are to be to be collated um and it's then, say, between water breaks and between, say, the halftime break, we kind of then decide what what is to be kind of shared and what isn't. Because at the end of the day, management are there to kind of look at the look at the you know performance and kind of say, okay, do we need to change anything or do we need to do uh, you know motivate certain players or you know? So you kind of have to choose your moments, um, and that's kind of something that our department have kind of agreed with management that you know you kind of have to choose your time really when you and, and it must be important really as well to be able to kind of take the time because in these situations you know you have to kind of be conscious that these are kind of real time situations where you know a result is at stake and if you see something that you feel that is popping up say you know what on whatever a stat that we're deriving you know, bring it to the to the attention of the management, and then for them to kind of t- take the decision on that basis. But we have a we have a very in our case we have a very good kind of um, rapport between the entire setup, um, which makes it all the, all the easier, and uh, we kind of all know our place. Yeah, and uh, maybe on the video side of things. So, I think we were uh, my own club was we were playing a match maybe two or three years ago. It was like a big semi final, and the the other club would film the game and were generous enough to send us the video after and the first thing that I thought of after about five minutes going it's it's, it's it's awfully slow watching this back I didn't realize we were playing as slow as like in my head we were playing fast but when I'm only comparing it to inter-county games it just looks so slow but on the video side of things how's the reaction being like that is it I don't know do you guys stream or how do you how do you work the video is it just in-house or well, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I'll be giving away any state secret by saying what we use because it's uh, it's kind of it's well out there. It's uh, Vio. It's um, it's a Danish um, uh, video technology company. Um, and to be honest with you, we found them absolutely excellent. There's plenty of clubs using them at the moment, um, but I won't go into the detail what exactly we use. But in terms of just on the simple basis of you know yourself, if you're say a certain player who says I didn't do that I didn't kick out say a goalkeeper I didn't kick out the ball to X twice mm-hmm. when he's challenged say after the game or say at training during the week whatever else it's the great thing of video technology that you have that retrospective that you'd be able to look back and 
sometimes it actually reshapes your opinion on a game. Do you know, you might have some preconceived notions when your blood is flowing and you're fitting right in the middle of it and whatever else. But we've we've found that it's fantastic to be able to, you know, even with defeats, you know, and defeats can be very tough to look at, um, that you can learn from them and you can kind of say, well, do you know what, maybe we shouldn't be doing this and maybe we should have a different kind of a point of view. Um, so, you know, the video technology for me is well up there, if not the same as the stats in terms of level of importance, um, because if, even five years ago, if you would have said to anybody that, say, at club level, that you'd be able to uh, record games and be able to have them, uh, you know, like we've, I, I don't even know off the top of my head, but we've so many games from, you know, the last number of years that we have that we can, you know, look back on and kind of say, right, is this the style of play? Did you want to operate on or is this the other one? Or, do you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's invaluable. And, uh, do you know, I think that's at club level, I think that's the way things are going. Yeah, and I, again, I, my own club's kind of looking into something like that, but I guess it's the combination of using the stats and backing up with the video side of things. Um, it is, it is sounds pretty exciting, and it's like like you even mentioned five years ago for a club player, this was miles away, and um, obviously you guys have put it in, but even with COVID and streaming games, which I know is slightly different, but it just gives people uh, able to watch games, but also able to watch games back as a player. It just means you're improving, and despite the fact it's obviously an amateur sport, the majority of players obviously want to improve and you can't really argue with a video in front of you as opposed to a manager telling you. Well, this is it. And, and do you know, um, the, the good thing as well is that you can clip um, yeah. from from uh, from it. So it basically means that there's no real hiding place at the end of the day. And, you know, I think most players, if they're true to themselves, will want that and will want that kind of accountability once it's fair, you know, once it's not being a, kind of a targeted kind of a, a means um, you know, so like for us, we find the video technology and the equipment that we bring each game is as important as anything that we're bringing now. It's just that important. And I'll give you an example. We were down in Drummond, which is what you consider the real uh, rural part of Kerry. And you go to the trouble of setting this up and ensuring that it's all working properly and whatever else. But you're nothing without the phone reception and uh, the reception for you know your mobile because it operates off your mobile. And we got to the end of the game, uh, we'd lost, but it was a close loss. But there was a few incidents in the game and a few incidents that were, which I won't go into the detail in, but they were they were important. Um, and we looked at our phones and we didn't think the actual recording was there. And it was kind of like heart in your mouth stuff. It was kind of shit, you know, because this was, it turned out to be quite important. Um, and thank God it was because we got home and we were able to connect to our, 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 our modem here and we were able to see, thank fuck, it's there. you know. So, and it turned out it was, it was important. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and it has uses like that you can't even foresee. And we've had a number of examples of that this year. Um, so I can't emphasize the importance of it. It's uh, for, for, for any team looking to improve or looking to kind of go to the next level. Um, it's it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Yeah. On the other side, we might not have seen the uh, Wicklow under 15 scenes had there been a oh, hammer there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't think that was VO now taking that. I think that was a, maybe a mobile phone or something. But yeah, look, I... Uh, Dan, I it, like even as you say when you're playing yourself, it, it's kind of um, it's it, it's just where things are at, and you know obviously there's money involved, and you know for a lot of clubs maybe these days it's you know trying to justify things like that mightn't be a uh, priority, but yeah, I like even from our own point of view, it's it's been exceptional. Yeah, and you, I kind of asked you this at the start, but for your own personal um, side, how do you do you enjoy the kind of process of being involved? Because it's it's a massive uh, role in the club, and particularly when you're gearing towards you, you mentioned you did very well in the league this year. Um, you're definitely like that. You're adding that one percent of the team that could be all the difference at the end if they win by a point or whatever. Yeah, look, um, thanks for mentioning that. We did get Division One for, for only the second time in our history, so it's um, it's a it's a great achievement for for ourselves and our club and. 
Um, even while I was away in Dublin, the amount of work that it's gone in at underage, it's only now beginning to show. And, you know, it's uh, it's fantastic, a fantastic achievement. Um, like for, for us and for me, like for, say, junior championship level down here, um, we would, and for me, to get to Crow Park, that's the kind of the ultimate objective um, to see my club play at Crow Park in a big day. Um, that to me would be as important as any any other sporting um element in my in my personal interest mm. uh, Ballymac is my club and always has been and always will be and that's the way it is so for me to be able to contribute I coach as well um, under 15s uh, in our own club and I've been able to kind of get into that as well and there's an awful lot of satisfaction involved um, from the coaching point of view as well to kind of see what's coming through at, at underage and, and stuff like that but yeah look I'm not going to lie it's 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 fabulous. It's uh, and there's a great group of lads there as well, which makes the work all the easier. Um, you know, there's a hunger there. Um, the management have great ambitions for the club. You know, so you know when you come into an environment like that, you know it's uh, like I, I'd be straight with you. If it wasn't like that, I'd be questioning: Would I get involved and would I put in the time uh, required? Because you know, having been away, I've seen what other clubs do and how they operate and stuff like that. Um, and I've tried to bring as much as I can from that experience home. Um, but the good thing is there is that level of um, ambition there, um, which I, that's the way I try to operate. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I love it. The only problem is we're out of the championship. <laughs> I may as well d- divulge that. So, um in Kerry at the moment, uh, our own club is a part of a district, St. Cairns. Um, and like Kerry, trying to figure out the Kerry County Championship, you need a PhD, as I was saying to her. <laughs> but um, the county championship starts proper down here in two weeks' time. Um, so, you know, uh, we'll have a number of players involved with that, and I wish them all the best. And then finally, then for someone listening, so because like obviously with GA the old days, it was always you either play or you manage. There was no kind of other role. So you know there is this kind of stats, and particularly for uh, you know clubs in junior or intermediate that haven't quite got that yet in their club. And there's someone listening that would want to kind of get started in in stats. Would you kind of recommend it, or how would you go about it? I guess it it probably all starts with you know keeping you know recording the amount of wides or kickouts in a game, and then go from there really. I suppose it depends, like, Dan, it depends on your resources. Um, Look, at the end of the day, you could say, all right, we're going to go for the, you know, the the GPS in the back and, you know, try and go that, that. We we decided against that. We decided we wanted to try and kind of find a balance somewhere in the middle. You know, um, the first, I suppose, recommendation I make is make sure you find someone who can count. I suppose that's a that's a pretty... Obvious one, but um, the myself, my colleague uh, Kevin, we, uh, you know, we work very well together, and we know how to split things, and we know, and we know the game. We, you know, we consider ourselves. We know how the game works and operates, and what to look out for, and we know what the boys are looking for as well. Um, so for anyone starting out, obvious, learn know how to count and know how to kind of be observant, good eyesight. Jesus, I, I, you know, that's an obvious one again, but. Like it's the one pet peeve for me in the GA at the moment is we have umpires who can't see things. And, you know, I just find that very frustrating, <laughs> you know. Um, so I always say we need people, if we're collating stats, you need to have good eyesight. So you need to be able to see what's going on. So to answer your question, know your budget. Depends what you're looking for, your objectives. Um and also you need to kind of consult with management as well, what they want. And even wider in terms of players. Um, it depends on the relationship to, you'd have yeah. with players. As opposed to what you want, you need to kind of, you need to talk to management and players. Absolutely. You know, you might have your own preconceived notions, mm. um, you know, and that's actually a good thing that we have within our own club. We have a very, very good kind of communication uh, between all aspects and that shapes then what we put together. Um, so, you know, ultimately, it's all about knowing your budget, um, eyesight, knowing how to count. But at the same time, keep it simple. Don't go too elaborate um, in terms of the stats side of it anyway. Don't go too elaborate initially. Try find your feet and see, see how you go.
Brilliant, Aidan. And listen, final thing I was going to ask this at the end of kind of chats, is there anything we haven't covered that you'd like to, like to mention or, or we kind of got most things sorted or covered on, on the stats and VEO side of things? I suppose the only thing on the VEO side uh, I would say is, you know, I, I just can't recommend it enough. It's just a fabulous piece of kit. Um, it, you know, it's not like I'm giving away any state secret here. I think it's well, well known. Um, and it's a very simple technology. It basically follows the ball. That's what it does. And that's how it keeps up yeah, with the play. Explain, explain that because I, I had a quick Google of it before and I was kind of going, how, how does that, that doesn't make sense to me, but it just follows the ball. <laughs> so it basically, the camera lens. So the camera just basically follows as the ball is going up and down the field. It'll And if say, for example, if the ball or the play is, say, at the far end of the field, it'll automatically zoom in to that section of the field where the ball is. It's it's nuts to be honest. Like, but at the same time, I have some people have kind of said to me that it's it is in te technological terms, it is actually a fairly relatively simple concept because it's literally say right, follow the ball. That's the artificial AI side of it, um, and then it kind of zooms into the say wherever the play is going. Now, it is a soccer based technology, so that the pitch dimensions would be bigger for GA than. For soccer so sometimes the the view is not ideal but still you can make out things you can still make out the important things um and as i said earlier there has been a number of instances where it has become very or was insanely useful for us um even as i said things that you would never imagine or until they actually arise um so that'd be one thing i would say uh you know it's up to each individual club what they do but um you know it's very useful very <clears throat> useful listen aiden thanks a for coming on the podcast cheers Anna. and for those listening do get us attacking sports and social media and uh, do please like subscribe to us on youtube and uh, follow the podcast on your favorite podcast platforms we'll be back next monday until then take care <laughs>